All right, so let's say we have a galvanic cell here, and let's call this the cathode, and this the anode. Now, um, first of all, in a galvanic cell, now is this the same or different from an electrolytic cell? It's different. Yeah, so the other type of cell we'll talk about soon is an electrolytic cell. Is this the same or different from a voltaic cell? Same. Yeah, so I think your instructor sometimes uses that term, voltaic. So we need to know this is the same as being voltaic. So these two terms are synonyms. Now, if this is a galvanic cell, is this a type of cell where the reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Spontaneous. Good. Spontaneous reaction. Does that mean that the delta G here is going to be positive or negative? Negative. Good. The negative delta G means spontaneous. That's good. How about the cell voltage? Would that be negative or positive? Positive. Didn't seem quite so happy about that, but it's good that you knew that. <laughs> so the key thing here is that this, this is confusing. The sign of delta G has the opposite meaning to the sign of the cell potential. So what types of reactions are favored? Reactions with negative delta Gs or positive cell potentials. Um, so those two have signs that mean kind of the opposite things. There's actually an equation. Yeah. That relates G and E. Do you guys know what the equation is that relates delta G and E? You have that in a cheat sheet. Do you guys get to use a cheat sheet on your exams? Do you give me the formulas or do you have to have them memorized? Um, sometimes she will give us formulas, most of the time she will not. So you need to have them memorized. Yeah. All right, do you happen to have memorized this formula for delta G and E? All I, all I can remember is from entropy. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's see if I can remember this. It's something like delta G equals N F E. Does that look oh, at all familiar? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, should there be a positive or a negative relationship between these? Well, the, I think the n should be negative, right? Right. All right. So I was just leaving that out so we could figure that out. So in a sense, we have to memorize this. But we shouldn't have to memorize that there's a negative sign. We already know these have to have opposite signs. We know these have to have opposite signs from what we just talked about here. This is an important formula, then, that relates these two concepts. Uh, very often, you would use this for the standard cell uh, potential and the standard delta G. So this stands for what? The cell potential, which is the same as the cell voltage. Those are two terms that mean the same thing. All right, and as long as we're at it, um, we can also relate these terms to K, which is the equilibrium constant. So let's add that term in here. And let's figure out whether we need a positive or a negative sign here. Well, if K is big, does that mean that the equilibrium lies far forward or far reverse? Forward. Yeah, so does that mean that the reaction is favorable or unfavorable? Favorable. A favorable reaction. If the reaction is favorable, should that give us a, um, a negative or a positive delta G? Negative. Yeah, so if K is big, that would tend to give us, we could say, a very small delta G that is far to the left on the number line. So is there a positive or a negative relationship between K and delta G? Positive. Oh, wait, negative, sorry. Yeah, with the bigger K, is the, the further to the right K is on the number line, the further to the left on the number line this should be. So should I have a plus or a negative sign here to relate delta G and K? Negative. Yeah, that would be a negative sign too. All right, so here's one master equation that relates standard delta G, standard cell potential, and equilibrium constant. So these would be good things to have in your notes. So can you see that this is really, what is it, one, two, three equations in one. So if you want to relate delta G and E, 
Here's the equation that relates delta G and E. If you want to relate delta G and K, you would use this equation. And what's the equation that's relating E and K? Notice that if you relate those, the two negative signs would cancel. This negative sign can cancel with this negative sign. There's a positive relationship between K and E, because a positive E indicates a favorable reaction. But there's a negative relationship between K and delta G, because a negative delta G indicates a favorable reaction. So all three of these equations are packed into this one idea. So you can either have these three written separately, or you can just write it like this and get the equations that you need. So this is a, something you know, I'm sure you need a lot on the exam. Uh, going back to here, what's happening here at this cathode? Oxidation or reduction? Reduction. And what's happening over here? Oxidation. How do you remember that? Right. Good. Ox. <laughs> so it's good that you know those good mnemonics. So there's lots of good animal mnemonics in electrochemistry. So we already saw Leo goes Ger. So an ox, red cat. The anode is the site of oxidation, and the cathode is the site of reduction. The reason those are good mnemonics is that they're always true for any types of cell. For any type of cell, the cathode is the site of reduction, and the anode is the site of oxidation. So those animal mnemonics will always give us the right answer. So which way are the electrons moving in this wire, towards the anode or towards the cathode? The cathode. Because something has to be gaining electrons over here. Um, that's what the cathode means. So the electrons would be going this way. By the way, do I, need to put an out, do I need to put an outside power source in to make these electrons move in this galvanic cell? Because it's a spontaneous reaction. So I'm not going to put any outside battery across this wire. This, is, yeah, this reaction will happen on its own. 